Was that my recognition? Okay, Ms. Porter. All right. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Lohmeyer, do you agree with President Trump's Executive Order 9981? Well, you'll sorry, have excuse to, me, President, you'll have to, I'm so sorry. You'll Let me have to start explain again. what you mean. I don't know Let me start again. executive orders by number. Do you agree with President Truman's order that integrated the armed services despite the fact that separate but equal was still the law of the land at the time? Let me say that there, I, this is an important point. The congressman to your left has said he wanted to find common ground. There's a lot of what the general has said today that I don't disagree with whatsoever, but that seems to me irrelevant to the discussion of progressivism as an ideology in the military workplace. Let me point out one example in answer to your question of what I am opposed to. Reintroduction of segregation. Reclaiming my time, Mr. Lohmeyer. Reclaiming my time. Consequence. Mr. Chair, it's my time of DEI initiatives. We've got Mr. Chair, I'd like to reclaim my time. segregation because of DEI, and I'm happy to talk to that. Mr. Lohmeyer, I'm going to try again. Do you agree? I appreciate that you have opinions and you're entitled to have them, but I'd like you to try to answer the question I'm asking with respect, sir. Do you agree with President Truman's Executive Order 9981 that integrated the armed services despite the fact that separate but equal was still the law of the land at the time. The I agree that the military has led the way in integration okay. and unity, okay, which has you. been the strength of the United States military, but we're undoing it all with diverse, okay, thank you. diversity, Re equity, and Reclaiming my time. That decision was progressive at the time. In other words, the military went to a place of integration and efforts to have black and white soldiers working alongside each other. It wasn't always perfect, it wasn't always easy, but it was literally the definition of progress and progressive, it went beyond existing law. General, did Truman's actions to integrate the military under EO 9981 lead directly to any readiness deficits? You're a his military historian. No, in fact, the first thing it did, Congresswoman, was integrate Arlington National Cemetery. Mr. LeBaer, you were in active duty, um, and thank you for your service, Air Force officer in 2010, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, did any, were there any um, big problems in military readiness in 2010? As a young flyer, I never paid attention to what you folks were doing. I never paid attention to reports on readiness, lethality. I simply focused on a mission. It was learning how to fly an aircraft, and at that time, it was training our allied partners and foreign military pilots how to fly jets. Well, I'm, I'm glad, Mr. Lohmeyer, that you were able to focus on your military duties. Um, and it seems to me that your own testimony here is, is a really good example of the fact that the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell did not cause a disruption in, in your ability or the military readiness of the Air Force to do its job. Uh, General, is there any empirical evidence that gay Americans serving openly has hurt military readiness? No. So historically, when the military has been progressive, has gone beyond where other policies may be, has, has tried to encourage um, diversity or welcome people to be diverse and, and um, to learn about each other, there has been no harm to force readiness. General, could one consider President Truman's executive action a diversity initiative? Right, General Truman's, why am I having so much trouble with this? General, could one consider President Truman's executive action a diversity initiative? Yes. How about the 2010 repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell? Yes. So in your view, should the military roll back those diversity policies? Absolutely not. Mr. Thibault, do you think the military should roll back those initiatives? Uh, no, Congresswoman, I don't, because the integration of the armed forces in 1948 was a recognition that the military is different from society. And so it, so it should march to the beat of a different drum. And that, that's why I think it was such a good policy, because it ensured that we had the best. That things changed in 1960 when the military became a beacon for affirmative action and quotas. Uh, but I, I agree with you that it was good policy in 1948. Okay, and do you have, uh, would you repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell? No, because it's a means by which 
the military attracts the best talent. But what I would object to is if the military had a quota for LGBT Americans. Do they? The books. Not that I know of, but they do for black, white, Hispanic Americans, and, and I think those General, are... is that correct? I'm not aware. My brother served. He went to the United States Naval Academy. He served five years. He led... Um, he served on a nuclear submarine. I don't recall him ever enforcing, being part of, as an officer, any type of quota system. There are no quota systems, Congresswoman. Hmm. I don't recall that being U.S. military policy. I don't remember ever passing a law since we're in Congress and we make the rules. I don't remember ever passing a law with regard to that. Our military is more effective when it's diverse, and you can't have an effective, diverse team without teaching people how to work effectively together. That's what these initiatives should focus on. I yield back. The deal reached between Speaker Johnson and Leader McCarthy includes $20 billion in cuts to IRS funding now, in this budget, in 2024, rather than more spread out. Are you comfortable with losing some of that IRS funding that Democrats have pushed so hard for? Cutting the IRS's funding is, is really um, bass backwards, frankly. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't accomplish anything. The whole point of funding the IRS is so that the IRS can, can fulfill its mission, which is, hold it, funding the government. So if we're actually trying to make sure the government has resources and that we're not overspending, that we have money coming into our coffers to pay for the programs that we agree we need, then we ought to fund the IRS. Every dollar we put into the IRS returns four or five times the revenue in terms of if collection of taxes that are legally owed. So this is a very kind of disingenuous strategy to suggest that somehow cutting funding but, from the IRS is solving our budget problems. It won't. But look, and the CBO laid out exactly what it would mean in terms of adding to the deficit, but you would agree to it reluctantly just to get a uh, budget, get a top line budget. I mean, we, we have to fund the government. A okay. shutdown is unacceptable. Um, but I think that it is important, as we're still in the middle of this debate, to educate the American people that cutting the IRS funding is deepening our deficit problems, not solving it. So that Americans who love this country and just want a better future don't have to listen to hours of frustrating attacks and procedural debates in a partisan game, let me sum it up. One, there is zero evidence of President Biden doing anything wrong, including in connection with his son. No evidence of an impeachable offense. Not a little, not something, none. Two. Hunter Biden has offered to testify in public in front of this committee. If Republicans only want his secret, private testimony, that is, as the kids say this these days, sus. If my Republican colleagues are truly in this to get answers, and I hope they are, stop wasting all our time on holding Hunter Biden in contempt on a deposition and ask him your questions. He'll be here under oath and the American people can watch. What's more transparent than that? What's better accountability than letting the American people hear Hunter Biden's answers? That's real accountability, not political gamesmanship behind closed doors. This is a game where nobody wins and everybody loses. It is Washington at its worst. And I'll tell it like it is without pointing the finger at either party. This sucks. They've been in those hearings about Hunter Biden and about President Biden. And the fact is, you're exactly right. They have no evidence showing that President Biden received payments from foreign actors. To the contrary, we have millions and millions of dollars, hard evidence showing that this money went to President Trump. So it's hypocrisy for Republicans on the Oversight Committee to look the other way, to ignore Donald Trump's violations of the emoluments clause of our Constitution, and then try to fabricate against evidence to the contrary allegations, baseless at this point allegations toward President Biden. And I think Americans are sick of that kind of hypocrisy. Oversight is about even-handed application of the law, about holding anyone accountable if they don't follow the rules of our Constitution. And the fact is we have hard evidence that President Trump didn't. The Republicans, sadly, for them, have no evidence with regard to President Biden. General, could one consider President Truman's executive action a diversity initiative? Yes. How about the 2010 repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell? Yes. 
So in your view, should the military roll back those diversity policies? Absolutely not. Mr. Thibault, do you think the military should roll back those initiatives? Uh, no, Congresswoman, I don't, because the integration of the armed forces in 1948 was a recognition that the military is different from society, and so it, so it should march to the beat of a different drum. And that, that's why I think it was such a good policy, because it ensured that we had the best. That things changed in 1960 when the military became a beacon for affirmative action and quotas. Uh, but I, I agree with you that it was good policy in 1948. Okay. And do you have, uh, would you repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell? No, because it's a means by which the military attracts the best talent. But what I would object to is if the military had a quota for LGBT Americans. Do they? On the books. Not that I know of, but they do for black, white, Hispanic Americans, and, and I think those General, are- General, is that correct? I'm not aware. My brother served. He went to the United States Naval Academy. He served five years. He led, um, he served on a nuclear submarine. I don't recall him ever enforcing, being part of, as an officer, any type of quota system? There are no quota systems, Congresswoman. Hmm. I don't recall that being U.S. military policy. I don't remember ever passing a law since we're in Congress and we make the rules. I don't remember ever passing a law with regard to that. Our military is more effective when it's diverse, and you can't have an effective, diverse team without teaching people how to work effectively together. That's what these initiatives should focus on. The provisions of the Republicans' tax package um, increase or you know, add to or pay down our national debt. Uh, it undoubtedly added to our national debt. Hmm. Republican math here. It added to our national debt. Let me let me show everybody how much. Wait, hang on. It's a two whiteboard situation. Can you read that number for everybody? That's one point eight trillion. 1.8 trillion. Couldn't even fit it all on one whiteboard. So this is how much they added to the deficit, even as they're, the premise of this hearing is that the deficit is a real problem and that Republicans believe it's a real problem. So if they didn't solve our deficits through the tax code, through that um, tax piece, they surely took action to fully pay for Social Security and Medicare um, so that we don't drive up the deficit that way. Dr. Harris, do you know how many Republicans co-sponsor the Social Security 2100 Act, which would make Social Security solvent for years to come? I don't know. I'm guessing zero. Zero. It's a really small number. Don't even need a whiteboard can do this one with my hand. So Republican math in terms of the budget, which, which is made by Congress, not made by seniors, by older Americans, means increasing our deficit by $1.8 trillion and doing zero to reduce the effect of the debt um, by Social Security and Medicare and adjusting those policies to be able to be um, better funded.